If you are tired of constantly learning, constantly learning about new languages, new frameworks, right? Or maybe you are working on a stack where you're constantly having to update your skills every three to six months. Basically, I'm going to give you guys the best three stacks that you guys should focus on if you want to have better work-life balance, okay? Meaning that you're just going to have to learn the skills and then once you learn the skills, you're good to go. You don't have to constantly be relearning everything every few months or having to just go out of your way and try to keep up with the Joneses, right? Of like every single skill that's out there. You just want to come in here, have a better work-life balance. This is the video for you, okay? So let's get started. I'm going to start with here right stacks for better work-life balance right and this is things that i've noticed in the last 10 years that i've been a developer and i can basically vouch for this right like if you fall into the stacks you can literally just chill once you learn the skills that you need to learn you can pretty much just stay in this ecosystems and you're good to go you don't have to learn anything else like literally and again that might be a good thing for some people. That might be a bad thing for some people. Some people, they like the the learning of new things constantly, right? Or relearning what they already know. Uh, and some people want to come in and say, hey, this is my job. I just want to come in, do my job, right? Get paid for it. And I want to have time to chill when I get home. I want to relax when I, you know, come on the weekends. I don't want to have to constantly be thinking about, man, I got to refresh my skills every few months. I only have to do that when I want to get a new job or something like that. Like if you want to have that type of lifestyle, just better work life balance for again, for your <laughs> mental, uh, you know, your mental health and also to for you to just say, maybe I want to work on my own personal projects instead of being somebody that constantly keeps learning the same things. And again, I'm looking at you, JavaScript. I'm looking at you, the whole JavaScript ecosystem. Yes. Okay. Um, but yeah, let's get started with this, man. Okay. The first one that we have here is email development. Okay. Email development is super simple to do. All you need to do is just HTML, CSS, right? You're working with tables. Uh, you're basically uh, might have to build some landing pages here and there. Work with the DOM, you know, to basically save some type of data to a server or to connect to an ESP, like an email service provider or something like that on a landing page, right? And but that's pretty much it. As far as like JavaScript, you don't have to go too deep into it. Uh, you can pretty much just do this with just HTML and CSS. Okay, learn how to build responsive emails. Once you get to do that, you also want to learn how to use the tools to be able to test your emails. And then from there, you're good to go. You could get hired with that alone. Okay. So again, just with this area here, you're good to go. Now, as you become a more experienced email developer, one ecosystem that you really want to get into is Salesforce. Salesforce is the leader CRM of the world. And guess what? They have a marketing system uh, where you can go in and create custom emails and, and basically set up email automations, etc. So once you learn the skills here, you're good to go. You can stay right there <laughs> straight up. And again, some people might say, well, I want to continue learning more stuff. That's up to you, right? Not everybody wants to constantly learn new things every single month, every single year, every six months, etc. People want to just come home and relax. It's like, I got the skill. I got this ecosystem. I'm good at it. Guess what? I could continue getting paid uh, more money. The, you know, the higher the companies I go into, right? Or the bigger the companies I go into, right? With just this skills. Okay. Email development. If, if you want to go in and take the super easy route, this is the one for you guys. Okay. Now the next one that we have here is Laravel development. Okay. Laravel. One thing that I love about it is a framework that once you learn it, you can pretty much say I'm a Laravel, Laravel developer and I can go to any company that's out there that's using Laravel and they're going to be building the applications the exact same way. Okay. So again, you don't have to constantly learn new things. Now they do add like certain updates and upgrades like every six months, 
but it's really more like packages and, and like little things that they add for security purposes. But once you understand the ecosystem of Laravel, like you're good to go. And all you really need is HTML, CSS, basic JavaScript, um, MySQL, uh, PHP, and Laravel, right? Once you understand those things, this is an ecosystem that you could stay there and you'll be good to go. You don't have to be constantly learning random libraries and random packages that's out there. It's like this right here has everything that you need. Okay. So the next one that we have right here is .NET. Okay. So .NET developers, uh, this is a, another one that I can tell you right now, there's guys that learn about ASP.NET in like 2009. And right now in 2022, like they're literally doing the same thing. Now, again, I want to point this out. For some people, they might look at this and say, damn, I, I would hate to have that job. <laughs> Where it's like, hey, I'm doing the same thing that I was doing in 2012, doing in 2022. Same thing I was doing in 2018, now I'm doing 2025. Like some people might hate that, okay? But that's fine. Some people like me, look at this as an opportunity of, hey, I'm going to work, I'm getting paid for the skills that I already have, right? I can have more time for my family, more time for me to even travel, right? Or maybe learn other skills outside of development, maybe try to build another business, etc. There's so many different things that, that come with having a stable ecosystem where you're not constantly relearning the same things. And again, JavaScript, I'm looking at you, right? No JS, I'm looking at you, okay? So again, HTML, CSS, basic JavaScript, MySQL, right? C Sharp, .NET, .NET Core, right? TypeScript and Angular, okay? This is more like a full stack developer. Again, Laravel also tools full stack developer, uh, but I will consider like a Laravel developer more on the back end than even the whole full stack. Uh, when you're doing .NET, um, you're kind of getting your hands dirty on both sides, front end and the back end. Again, um, very important to learn about TypeScript, very important to learn about Angular. Uh, but again, once you learn those things, you're good to go. You know, there's companies right now that are still using Angular 2, right? And again, you might say, well, isn't this legacy code? Yes, there's some companies that are still using legacy code, but it's consistent, okay? Once you learn the skills, you don't have to constantly relearn the same thing over and over again. And there's also to uh, the style of convention over configuration, right? Uh, which means that if I learn this skill, right? And I decide to leave my company maybe a year, two years in and I already built experience, I can go to another company and they're building the applications exactly the same way. Okay. So it's not like I'm lost or I got to take two weeks, two months to, you know, learn how the, the whole company works. It's like, no, it's like everybody that works with .NET, they're building applications the same way as somebody who's building .NET in another company. Okay. So pretty much it's like, plug and play. You come in, you already know what to do. You know where everything is located. All the files is there. The way how things get handled in the database, things that get handled in the front end, you're good to go. That's it. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So again, uh, this could be a pro and a con depending on what type of individual you are, right? But this is where I always tell people, you can always go and build whatever application, whatever language and whatever framework you like, right? But when you go to work, work is work. You get what I'm saying? Like, even if you go to any company, work is work. It's, it's a job for a reason. If not, it wouldn't be a job. Okay. Trust me, they wouldn't pay you for it. But again, for me, the way how I look at this is I want to have a better work-life balance, right? I want to be able to say, Hey, I don't have to keep learning things constantly. I don't have to come in and have to go to a new company and learn their new structure or learn, you know, how this one guy who decided to build this application initially, now, you know, he's building it in a way where it's not like an industry standard and, or using stacks where there isn't an industry standard, where it's pretty much is like a free fall wild, wild west, where anybody can go in and build an application, however they like. Um, to me, I find that uh, it, it gets annoying, right? especially like the older that you get, right? In the sense of how many years you've been in the game, you don't want to constantly be relearning certain things when you already know how to do it uh, a certain way. 
Okay, uh, especially because a lot of times there's not really a benefit of like rebuilding things. Um, a lot of times, most of the times it's just people like, okay, we have to stack and let's just rebuild everything for no reason. Right. And most of the companies that use like dot net, um, and even Laravel, like they take into consideration, like if this thing works and it's making us money, let's keep it going. You get what I'm saying? So now you're just like killing bugs, adding new features here and there. Right. But if it's making money, it's making money. Okay. Let's keep it like that. Okay. And for you as a developer, you have a better work life balance. You don't have to be dealing with a lot of BS. You already know how this application is going to work. And when things pop up, you know exactly how to fix the bugs or uh, where the issue is because you've done it for so long that now it's it's pretty much on autopilot. You go to work, autopilot. Boom, 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 do your work, come back home, work on whatever you want, chill, play video games, Netflix, you know, play with your little Arduinos, right? Your Raspberry Pis, whatever you're into, right? Um, and to me, I think that's something that's very important, uh, especially nowadays as people start getting more uh where some people will get fatigued or even burnt out with development and i think there's a reason why you know you go into like .net and you can look into .net and you could find guys that have been doing it for 20 years or have been in that windows ecosystem for 30 years right and they're fine you know you'll see more older dudes in in those companies uh be, not because they'd be like man i'm i'm like this is the only thing that i can do is because is consistent work. You get what I'm saying? And you could actually specialize in something. And at the end of the day, they don't really get burnt out like that. Okay. That's something that, you know, maybe we could look into, um, maybe do like a, how you call this, like a poll or something. But I've realized this, that most of the companies where you see like all the trendy new things and all the trendy new frameworks and, and programming languages, you'll see that uh, developers constantly jump and constantly leave companies and, and constantly, you know, get, you see them on Twitter, like I'm burnt out. I'm this, this and that. And it's like, yeah, you burnt out because you're constantly learning new things and the skills that you already learned are basically obsolete or <laughs> deprecated by next week. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, now you're constantly in this, this cycle of like a little, how you call that? Those little mouses just going around, you know? So it's like, do you want to be doing that? Like I personally, I don't want to be doing that. Right. So again, there's a lot of people that's going to agree with me with this video. And some people is going to disagree with me. Right. Come in, put it in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. By the way, I want to let you guys know that if you want to learn how to code or guys, you definitely should visit codingphase.com. Okay. We're getting a lot of good results and a lot of good feedback from students that are coming in, getting higher in some of the biggest companies in the world. Right. And companies that, you know, are small and medium sized, right? Getting you the first job, your first opportunity, right? Uh, definitely go check out the Hall of Fame. You're going to see a whole bunch of guys that have came in and have found success with CodingPhase.com. Um, we're not trying to sell you a dream. We're not trying to, you know, oversell ourselves. We're literally trying to help you get your first job. Once you get your first job from there, we try to hold your hand for a year, a year and a half. And then from there, you could decide what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? But again, um, you could check it out. CodingFace.com literally is $20 per month. Get you started to learn about the front end. If you want to learn more things like email development, you want to learn more about PHP development, uh, you want to go into becoming a full stack developer or Shopify developer, guess what? That's all included in the Diamond membership. Okay. But if you just want to try the website out and see uh, what it is, you could definitely start with just $20. Okay. It's very simple, very straightforward. Uh, the Diamond membership is for people who need the extra help, like the accountability meetings, the group coaching uh, sections that, that we have, uh, live events. You get access to all the career bundles. You get access to the make money online courses, like pretty much using the skills that you have as a developer to be able to start making money online independently. Because to be honest with you guys, I'm the type of guy that I'm like, I'm, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm meant to work for somebody for the rest of my life. I'm meant to work for somebody, you know, maybe 
three to five years in my career. And then from there, I want to go in and build my own business and, and work for myself, right? If you are that type of individual, that's what we do at codingface.com. We try to put you on that career path of let's get you into the industry. Let's get you into positions where you can learn skills that you can reuse for yourself. And then from there, we can also help you out and teach you the ways of how to make money with your skills. I mean, this is how I'm able to live this independent developer lifestyle that I have. And it's really by just understanding how to monetize your skills. So if you're into that, definitely check out codingphase.com. All right, guys, I'm going to see you guys later. It's your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com. Peace. <laughs>